Hello, and thanks for joining me as I paint the final layer of paint color on the back side of these blocks that are part of the assemblage, the OK Corral. The words I'm keeping are on the other side. Just so you know, when I get to the last four blocks on the right, my hand won't be in the way of the camera. On this side, it is kind of tricky reaching my arm to paint around the camera without getting my head in the way and still position my brush to do what I want it to do. I am grateful for long arms. To paint the kind of textured look that I want, I trim my brush tips to create spaced bristles so that when I dry brush the paint, it creates those spaces allowing the previous layers to show through. I paint very lightly and after running my brush on paper towel, like I'm doing now, to make sure it is not overloaded with paint. In the making of the OK Corral, it all started with these blocks, and I found these years ago. For my assemblages, I collect wooden things from mostly flea markets, rummages, or garage sales, and the like. This includes toys, games, household items, and even furniture, and it's all taken apart for the wooden bits to use as parts for assemblages. I have shelves full of these bits. Yes, I am a hoarder in this regard. <laughs> Some time is devoted in the studio to applying gesso and painting the bits black and then of course letting them dry. Other times in the studio involve arranging pieces and seeing what fits together. The black helps to see the form of it better at the start. Sometimes the assemblage bits come together quickly, really quickly, almost as if the bits have a mind of their own. But sometimes an assemblage will sit for a time until the right part comes along to complete it. For this one, the basic parts all came together fairly quickly. It was when I started to apply paint that I could not bring myself to cover the words on the blocks. So they sat for a while inside the shelving box with the apple shapes until I understood whether to keep them, what to do with the words, if anything. I knew the general idea for this piece was something to do with education and some of the things I was experiencing and how it would coalesce that wasn't clear to me yet. For this reason, I always have more than one piece going at a time in the studio, whether an assemblage, a collage, or a painting, and I can always do the groundwork for future art by prepping things that I can use later. Each piece needs its own time to reveal itself. It can't be forced or rushed. So by moving to something else, it keeps me fresh for when I return to something that needed a pause. Once I decided to keep the words, I remembered the Dada Surrealist word games to unlock creativity. So I looked at the words. I was inspired to do my own version of that and create a poem that would inform the assemblage parts and tie my feelings and thoughts together. As I looked at each word, the sentences just wrote themselves. During this part of the process, it was kind of a rapid fire, kind of a rapid fire free association flow. And that is my favorite part of making art in any stage. When I placed the words in alphabetical order, I discovered that there were two A blocks. So I used apple and then of course anchor at the end of it. And the O and the K were missing. The blocks even suggested the title, reinforcing my belief that I don't just inform my art. My art informs me. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and listening. Always appreciate it.